He was one of Britain's most electrifying boxers, a muscular, regular guy, a pantomime star, and everyone's favorite underdog who, against all odds, finally reached the pinnacle by becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. But Bruno's reign lasted only six minutes. Today, we're diving into the brutal fight that buried Frank Bruno's career, revealing all the gritty details of his famous bout against Mike Tyson. At that time, Frank Bruno had been a pro boxer for over 13 years. He had held the European heavyweight title and had multiple shots at the world heavyweight crown throughout his career. In 1986, Tim Witherspoon stopped Bruno in the 11th round. Three years later, Mike Tyson knocked him out in the fifth. Then in 1993, he was defeated by Lennox Lewis. It seemed like after every loss, people only grew more fond of the Londoner, but by then, 33-year-old Bruno, fully consumed by ambition, was tired of being loved for his failures. That loss to his fellow countrymen, Bruno's third failed attempt to seize the coveted title, seemed to mark the end of Big Frank's championship dreams. His win against McCall was his only way out of this vicious cycle. Bruno came out swinging, and his powerful left jab made an immediate impact. McCall, confident in his invincibility, grinned through the punches until Bruno landed a crushing blow that made him feel vulnerable for the first time. Despite his endurance and grit, Bruno managed to hold on and secure the win, earning a thunderous ovation from the 30,000 fans at Wembley Stadium. His victory over Oliver McCall in the world title bout in September 1995 remains one of the most celebrated triumphs in British boxing history. In 1995, Mike Tyson was paroled after serving time for the rape of Desiree Washington in 1991. After his release, he fought twice, disqualified Peter McNeely. Now the second knockdown, he's hurt more on the inside, but this is still a replay of the first knockdown. Mike comes across just a nice, nice short, crisp, turned over right hand. And knocked out Buster Mathis Jr. in a nationally televised fight. Following his win over Mathis, Tyson leapfrogged Lewis in the WBC contender rankings and his promoter Don King, who also promoted McCall, secured a contract where McCall would defend his title against Bruno, with the winner obligated to defend it against Tyson in their first defense. That time I rocked him, I'm going to rock him to sleep. I hope Don King's got room in his life. There's not much I can say, but I beat him once, and I beat him before, and I'm going to beat him again. Thank you. Unlike their first fight, where they were somewhat cordial, things got heated this time around. We asked Frank Bruno. I can't really tell you how he's going to, a quick pace, fast pace, slow pace. All I'm going to tell him, I'm going to win. I'm going to knock him out right into donkeys. Hey, lap. Only in America. You know what I mean? Quite simple. Bruno wasn't hiding his negative feelings towards Tyson, and Tyson was equally determined. I'm called Crook, I'm going to win, and I'm going to knock him out, you know what I mean? I've been away for too long. I waited soon, about 16 years to get in this position where I am, you know what I mean? And boy, he'll have to kill me to beat me that night, man. He'll have to murder me. I'm telling that. He'll have to, to, not, he'll have to kill me. <laughs> I feel much more stronger mentally and physically, and this is my time. Tyson had his time, you know? Who God bless nobody curse. I'm thank you for all the British players sticking behind me. I'm in the best condition of my life. And after March 16, I'll be the new heavyweight champion of the world. He's made his money. I'm going to do him a favor and knock him out. And right into Don King's yard. I'm going to do a good job. And trust you, after this, you won't forget this for a long time. 
And so, on March 16, 1996, the fighters finally squared off in the ring. It became clear when Tyson landed a powerful right hand on Bruno within seconds of the fight. 27 pounds heavier, almost four inches taller, huge reach advantage, and here we go. Around. Anybody or anything, but Mike Tyson is a phenom. Keeping Tyson under control of the belt. He'll be very anxious. From then on, Bruno's only goal was to get out of the ring in one piece, not to win. Let Mike do what Mike wants to do on the inside. A nice. straight right hand there by with, uh, their heads off. Bruno with the questionable chin. Get off that neck, come on. Get off that he clinched at every opportunity, not wanting to let Tyson out of his grasp. This tactic helped him survive the first round, but it was already frustrating referee Mills Lane. The body didn't seem to do anything, but it was a nice effort. And any time, oh, here comes Tyson. Tyson with a combination. With 20 hey, you see where Tyson wobbles him with a big right hand? You can't fix it, Jim. That was never great to begin with. A left hook by Tyson, but Bruno comes forward. Mike Tyson looked way better than in his recent fights before prison. At one point, he even showed off his signature peekaboo style, dodging five straight punches from Bruno before launching his own attack, landing his punches right on target. On in every instance, anytime he gets close to, anytime he gets close, put any efforts toward punching if he's just worried about holding. Act as badly as he did in the jitters. He may be settling in. Halfway through the second. Less than a minute remaining in round. Bruno switches. That's yeah, where he got hurt in the first round. That right hand. That could have been a cut right there. See that? And that's saying something for a 247 pounder. There was a nice right fighting offensively. Right uppercut. But it couldn't last forever. In the third round, Tyson landed a right to the body, followed by a left hook to the jaw, then unleashed a long combination of punches, finishing with a series of right uppercuts. For the Tyson who fought Medellin and Mathis. Here's a combination uppercut by Tyson. Tyson laying it on, pouring it on. Down goes Bruno into the ropes. Well, let's take a look at how Tyson took care of business. Ducked under, a shot under the arm and the legs, and from here on out, a rain of punches, which buckled as we take further looks. Interestingly, Buster Mathis Jr. ended up staying in the ring longer with Mike Tyson. Bruno collapsed onto the ropes, which held him up. The referee decided to stop the fight. And I will maintain, and I mean no offense to any fighter, it is more honorable to get knocked out in one, two, or three rounds. WBC heavyweight champion of the world. That fight turned out to be Frank Bruno's last. Although he initially talked about a possible third fight with Tyson, doctors warned him that he risked losing vision in one eye if he continued boxing, and soon after, he announced his retirement. What followed was a lucrative career as a TV personality. In the late 90s, there wasn't a week that went by without him appearing on screen. But behind the scenes, things weren't going so well. In 1998, Bruno was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and three years later, in 2001, his marriage to Laura ended in divorce. A year later, Bruno's trainer and mentor George Francis committed suicide. To top it all off, Bruno's business partner stole 300,000 pounds from his account, leading to a sharp decline in his mental health by 2003. Over time, his condition improved, but in 2012, worn out and exhausted, he returned to the hospital. Bruno still harshly criticizes the medication he was given at the hospital, which he claims turned him into a zombie. His willingness to speak openly about his struggles is one of the main messages he hopes to convey through his book and charity work. He believes men, in particular, are prone to running away from their problems. In his book, Bruno describes his bipolar disorder as an illness that creeps out of the shadows. I'm dealing with it and fighting it, he says. But even when it's in the background, deep down, I know it could come back. In the end, six years later, Mike Tyson reclaimed the championship belt, but his reign was short-lived. But that's a story for another day. Can you imagine if we fought again? Yeah. Frank would probably win. <laughs> So that would never hit him. The Frank Bruno legacy moves on. <laughs> it moves on. Yeah.
Definitely.